And now it's time for another episode of Comments, Questions, and Corrections. We haven't done one of those in a while, but today there are no questions or corrections to be addressed. Today is just a comment. And that comment comes to us from Jason Sudal from my last video, What I Know About the CSX Sealand Stack Trains in Less Than Four Minutes. And Jason writes, The Dash 8s were returned to CSX after the Susquehanna had lost the bid to the Canadian Pacific for the Delaware and Hudson. The 4,000... Two through 4008 were long-term lease or bought units uncertain but were sold to the Providence and Worcester in 2004 to 2005. At the time of the Susquehanna having control of the DNH, they also acquired the XBN SD45s and F45s. It was a good time of mixed power and patched paint schemes. Let's unpack this. Jason is definitely right. That era was a good time for motive power in terms of what you were seeing running up and down the rails in this particular area. Now, I'm talking about obviously northeastern Pennsylvania and southern New York. Now, starting with the Dash 8s, as I pointed out, the Dash 8s were financed by CSX. Being that they were financed by CSX, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that they were bought outright. The Susquehanna leased locomotives long term. For example, their SD70Ms, the three SD70Ms that they had up until 2014, 2015, somewhere in that range, they were leased. They were on a, tw I believe it was a 20-year lease. They wound up on Norfolk Southern numbered, okay, it was 2797, 2798, and 2799. I believe those were the numbers of the three SD70Ms, ex-Susquehanna SD70Ms that Norfolk Southern purchased from Progress Rail that were returned from the Suzy Q around 2015 or it might have been 2014. 2014 or 2015 was around that time. But they were long-term lease units. And I talked about that in a video that I'd done about two and a half years ago. The only units that I'm aware of going to the Providence and Worcester in recent times are the ex-Florida East Coast blue and gold SD70M-2s a couple years back. That's all I know about the Providence and Worcester buying new locomotives at any time in the past 20 years or so. Now, the ex-Burlington Northern SD45s and F45s that he's talking about. Now, I've shown these pictures before in other videos, and this was Binghamton, New York in 1989, and you can clearly see the two in their original Burlington Northern paint, along with an X Redding GP39-2 that started on the Delaware and Hudson but ended up on the CSX. And I did a video about that one about two years or so ago. I don't think anybody would have predicted back in 1976 when Conrail was formed that years later in the 90s you'd still be seeing Redding Railroad diesels in their original paint leading mainline trains. Well, as evidenced by this picture, that's very much the case. How the CSX ended up with this and other Jeep 39-2s like this is an interesting story. Back when Conrail was formed, there was hopes that the Reading Railroad and the Erie Lackawanna could stay independent of the Conrail merger by hopes of the Chessy system buying the two and providing, second providing a, second, a competitor to Conrail. Well, that didn't happen because labor unions and Chessie couldn't agree, so Chessie pulled out of the deal. In a last-ditch effort to provide some kind of competition for Conrail, the Delaware and Hudson doubled in size. It was given the Sunbury line from pretty much from Hudson Yard and Button from Hudson Yard all the way down to Sunbury. From that point on, it was given trackage rights over Conrail into Harrisburg, Philadelphia, Oak Island and Washington DC, the Potomac Yard when Potomac Yard was still there. When the Canadian Pacific took over the DNH in 91, the Jeep 39-2s, still in their Reading Railroad paint, were transferred to the CSX. Which brings us to this scene here in the 90s with a Delaware and Hudson, nay, Reading Railroad still in its green and yellow paint leading a CSX train on the main line. Something else interesting about this photo. Take a look at that yellow railroad crossing sign. Note the flashing lights, the flashing yellow lights on the top and the bottom of that sign. I've never seen that before. But as you can see from these other pictures, the x Reading Jeep 39-2s weren't the only green diesels that made it onto the D&H and in the Binghamton area during that time. The neighboring New York, Susquehanna, and Western seemed to have a fetish for x Burlington Northern locomotives particularly their wide-bodied EMDs. The 6642 is shown here with the 7412 in Binghamton Yard. In the late 80s or early 90s, I'm going to say the late 80s because by this point it was still a D&H diesel that uh, 
7412. The 7412 was built as Reading Railroad number 3412. It became the D&H 7412 and later became CSX 7412 when CP took over the D&H. And as long as I'm running my mouth about the D&H, I might as well tell you how they ended up with this particular engine. When Conrail was formed and D&H doubled in size to try to give it some kind of competition, which we know how well that went, the D&H was given a batch of locomotives from the Lehigh Valley and from the Reading to compensate for that new trackage. And what's funny about it is this, instead of all the garbage that everybody thought they were going to get stuck with, the D&H got the Lehigh Valley's and Reading's newest locomotives, particularly the GP38-2's from the Lehigh Valley and the GP39-2's from the Reading. So that's kind of interesting. What's even more interesting, or at least just as interesting, is the neighboring New York, Susquehanna, and Western and their little fetish for Burlington Northern Diesels. In addition to the wide bodies, they also uh, acquired a smattering of SD45s from the Burlington Northern, like the 6513 that you see here. It was built as Burlington Northern 6513 in June of 1971, and it also spent time as Montana Rail Link number 360, and the New York Susquehanna, it eventually became the 3624. Now, I'm assuming that the Montana Rail Link had it first. What matters to me is that like all of the SD45s that came from the Burlington Northern, it ended up in yellow paint and with the Suzy Q number, as you can see here. But getting back to the 6513, or I should say screen right, the uh, XD&H Bicentennial Diesel there that I'm sure you've noticed at this point, at this point in the game is looking pretty derelict as you can see here. In happier times, it was numbered 506 and even 1776, as both are shown as it rolls southbound through Buttonwood here in what's probably the early 80s, maybe maybe even the late 70s. As you know, it wound up being reincarnated as Western New York and Pennsylvania, number 406. And although it's long since lost its celebrity status as a red, white, and blue bicentennial diesel, I do believe that the Western New York and Pennsylvania has done a really nice job refurbishing this locomotive. I mean, the paint's in good repair, it's shiny. Best of all, it's now a remote control locomotive. I'm not sure where they use it at, but as you can see by this um, uh, radio control pack here, and check out those headlights. I've only ever seen headlights like that one other time, and that's on the Reading Railroad 2102, the ex Reading Railroad, ironically, 2102 that's working the Altoona Juniata shops. And one last little tidbit before we wrap up this video. We talked about this little industry a couple videos back and I want to thank all of you who reached out to me and pointed out the name of this industry. If you haven't read the comments it's called the Broome County Cold Storage. And as you can see it's sitting right next to the former Delaware and Hudson Yard. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because I found this old photo that I thought you might find interesting. This is around 1989. And that train that you see with the Suzy Q power, it's actually a Delaware and Hudson train, but the Suzy Q was operating the D&H at this time. If you don't know that story, back in 1984, Guilford bought out the Delaware and Hudson and added it to its collection of railroads. That, that would be Timothy Mellon. And uh, basically destroyed it. So much so that the D&H was shut down. The, I'm talking about the entire railroad now. was shut down entirely for at least 30 days. That's when the, new, the state of New York decided to sell it off. And I know for a fact that the Providence of Worcester tried to buy it. And I think maybe the Geneseo and Wyoming Corporation tried to buy it. But there were two short line slash regionals that tried to buy it. But ultimately CP got it because they were a class one. The train that you see here is a southbound coming out of Albany. And it's going to be coming into the East Binghamton Yard, nay Conklin Yard, which is where the D&H resided at that time. The yard is still here. The one that you're looking at here is still here, but it's not used for much of anything except storage and as a run-through track for trains to and from Binghamton and Albany. But that spur that you see off to the right, that's the Broome County Cold Storage Spur. Now, I don't know if it was called Broome County Cold Storage back in 1989, but that's certainly what it is called today. I just thought you might be interested in seeing that.